And we're back with another NCAA Wrestling Champion on the Bash Mania podcast. Today, two-time NCAA champion at Oklahoma State, Jordan Oliver, comes on the show as we navigate through the minds of one of the biggest personalities on the senior level today. Stay tuned for a great conversation, but before we dive in, let's roll the intro. It's Bash Mania! Let me tell you something, brother. He gave us everything he had in him tonight. What you gonna do when Bashamania runs wild? Oh, it's gonna be a good one. And business just picked up here on the podcast. Oh, yeah. Jordan Oliver, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. You enjoying the weekend? Two, two workouts enjoying today, it. so you got to be enjoying that. <laughs> yeah, you, you got to love it. You know, you got to live and love what you do. So um, in between those workouts, I'm going to the Tar Heels and the uh, Miami football game. So nice. that should be a good one. Yeah, you know, that's so, actually uh, a good way to, to kick things off is that you recently made the switch to North Carolina. Tell me about yeah. that, why you did it, how you like it. Um I, I, well, obviously, uh, going into a big year with 2020, uh, being an Olympic year, uh, I really felt like I needed to, um, uh, pick a location yep. that, uh, that I, I, I had a specific coach and team around me that knew me, uh, when I was developing as a wrestler. Yeah. Uh, that knows me as a person inside the room and outside the room that can hold me accountable and also uh, take me to the next level. Uh, with that being said, even uh, being at Cornell, Cornell was amazing. You know, uh, any everything they did for me, uh, the training scenario was absolutely amazing, and I loved it there. Uh, but I think getting to the level I want to be at with the Olympics and obviously the goal is to win a an Olympic title. Uh, I think I needed to surround myself with uh, a coach that knows me and had eyes on me uh, since the developing years at Oklahoma State. And uh, I got a double whammy here in North Carolina with uh, Kenny Monday. Uh, obviously, he's an Olympic gold medalist, so he's been there, know what it, knows what it takes uh, to get the job done. Uh, and then I have Coleman Scott, who's been a training partner of mine uh, since I've been at Oklahoma State, and another PA boy as well, and he's the head coach down here at North Carolina. So I think uh, me surrounding myself with uh, a group of people that know me, but also a group of people that have been on that level and have had success, right? Um, I haven't even broke through to make a team yet, and you know I look back and. Coleman Scott's one of those guys, you know, he never made a team, never made a world team and, and broke through in 2012, made the Olympic team and goes and takes a bronze. So, so it almost sounds uh, like from an outsider perspective, it, it seems like, and I say outsider perspective, like trying to see it how a fan might. And if you look at it like that, it almost seems like the Cornell move was wrestler based. Let me go to Cornell work out with one of the best in the world, Yanni. Then it seems like yeah. the North Carolina move is like, okay, you know what? Maybe it's not so much just wrestling with the best. Maybe I need to focus more on making sure the coaching's the the right matchup because it seemed like too it's almost like the wrestling community, you know this more than anybody. They're brutal. And right. it, as soon as you and Yanni go back and forth, it's like okay, Jordan's out of Cornell. And I think that's it's so easy to say one way or another. Like, if Yanni wins, it's, okay, if Yanni is the, what Jordan needs to be, he should keep training here. Then it's, well, if Yanni beat him, he should go somewhere else. You know, there's like that constant illusion or perception of what For a sure. high-level athlete should do without knowing that whole story. Yep, yep. And uh, I think a lot of people... Uh don't know the relationship that me and Yanni had and, and also getting there with the coaches, you know, Mike is an awesome coach, Rob. Uh, I think they're all amazing, you know? Uh, but then again, they haven't had the eyes on me, uh, as a wrestler when I was developing and, and really can tell me, okay, this is where you need 
your work, uh, and I can I can specifically see, and Kenny can specifically see where I'm lacking and things that I need to uh, step on or uh, step up my game on uh, that can make me successful. But uh, I think going to Cornell, I would never take it back. You know, I went there uh, to train with Kyle Dake. Uh, it was a great scenario. You have Coach Ahad, you have Coach Cole, Coach Gray. Uh, and the environment there is, it's electric, right? Uh, so even me and Yanni training, you know, I consider Yanni my brother. You know, uh, when we were training, when I first got there, it was, we weren't training to win the NCAAs. I knew his goals. Uh, right. And his goals were to be a, a world and Olympic champ. And that's awesome because at that level and, and his wrestling IQ and what, uh, what he was doing at the time, uh, and just the focus he had on wanting to be a world and Olympic champ, uh, I could relate to that so much. So when I got there, me and Yanni took off running you know, working out every day. And, you know, we knew that scenario would come up and, you know, we trained in the room to be, if it's not you, it's me. And if it's not me, it's you. So I think on the other side of things, people don't understand that. Yes, I'm an athlete and I compete against Johnny, but on the other side of the spectrum, I'm a coach. I love developing people. I love helping right. people reach their, their goals and dreams. And, uh, Man, you can sit down and ask Yanni. You know, me and Yanni, we we'd be working out. And I'd score in a position, and, and I'd be like, "Hey, this is the reason I scored. This is the reason if we wrestle, I can score, right? And this is what you got to fix, and not allow this window to open up." And it went through all competitors, right? If I scored in a way I thought Zane could score on them, or I scored on a way that I thought Frank Molinero could score on them, we went over those scenarios and addressed them, and. Hey, this is what I feel. And then there'll be days where Yanni's like, Hey, this is what I feel. And his wrestling IQ is, is it's special for his age. And, yeah, and for sure. Obviously for, for, for him to be an Olympic champ and world champ, he has to be thinking at that level. So, uh, we formed a great bond, uh, and we got to train every day and, and get to know each other. And we still are best friends, you know, it's, it's not like I would ever wish, you know, anything bad. And I we think just that, know we have to become competitors. And I think that's so hard for people in the wrestling community, especially as fans, to understand that you can be friends with your competitors or you can root for people. It happens with me all the time. Like, you know, I'll, I'll see guys like this past week, Yanni and Zane. I love them both. Or before that, it was Jordan and, and Taylor. Like, when they were at the same weight, when they were both at 74, and it's like, right. you know, th there's this there's such there's not that much showmanship in wrestling which i think you're changing i think you've been doing a lot especially the last year or two of building more character and and putting out more of a storyline and i don't think people realize how close to wrestlers are because a lot of wrestlers are they're off screen. You don't see much of a lot of people. You just assume right. that if Yanni's got the same goal you have that it's he's dead to me and that's not how it is <laughs> no no and, and that's what people see from the outside but we've came um and I, I and i believe that's why team usa is getting better and better by every year you know even a couple of years ago when i first got on the scene guys didn't want to train with each other it was hard to get guys to camp and now we have such team co uh, camaraderie and everybody working together that I think it's easy for us to want to help each other and build because if it's not me, then it's Johnny or Zane. And if I'm not winning, I'm from us as well. They're on my team right. and I root my heart out for Johnny or Zane to go win that gold medal. Right. So, uh, I bring a little bit different flair where I like to hype things up and I bring almost like the MMA side of things. Yeah. Where and I spice it up a little bit and people are like, Oh, he's talking crap and he's doing this, but you can go and ask down to Zane, you know, the, when, as soon as they win, I'm the first person to congratulate them and reach right. out like, Hey, if you need help, if you need a training partner, whatever you, you, here's my number, reach out and I can help you any way I can. Um, so I think that right there, it, it helps us and, and it helps me myself, right? They have things that they do very well and I have things that I do very well. And, and we can get together and, and 
throw techniques around and understand each other's thought processes and help each other. We're all growing together and not necessarily working against each other. Right. But obviously there comes a point in time where, yes, we do got to take the match against each other. And for that six minutes, I got to try to beat the heck out of you. Right. Right. It, it, at the end of the day, wrestling is it's wrestling. Somebody could win one day. The next day could be a whole different score, a whole different match. Right. And we understand that. And, and I think the, the overall goal is, you know, us bringing a, a gold medal back for 65 kilos. And I'm curious because you're obviously, you know, we started this conversation with the pretense or without the context that you're, you're one of the greatest wrestlers in the country. You you're just shy of a three time NCAA champ, two NCAA championships, the year in the middle could have easily went either way. Like a two time national champ, just shy of three time national champ. That is, that's, that doesn't happen on accident. That doesn't happen overnight. But you also right. do have this very matured mindset of, listen, if Zayn wins, if Yanni wins, whoever's the guy, I'm asking if I can be their training partner. You didn't see that even right. a few years ago, five years ago with a lot of people. Have you always had that mindset or growing up was it different? Like, Is that a recent thing or is that, has that always been your mindset? Uh, I think as an evolving wrestler, uh, you know, there's been times where it's like um, you think about it and you're like, man, I got to go win for myself, yep. right? But me as a wrestler, uh, and just knowing uh, and got to work together to become better, I think I always wanted to help any way yep. I can because, in a sense, I'm not just helping them. I'm becoming a more mature person, helping them. And by helping them, I'm understanding more about myself, more about my wrestling. And also, you know, guys like whoever it is, Metcalf, you know, in the, in the past, or um, a Reese Humphrey, a, a Logan, yeah. Steven, you know, even Yanni and Zane, those guys bring something to the table that I don't have, obviously. You know, they're, they're great in different aspects of the sport. And to be the best... You have to just keep evolving. If not in one aspect of the sport, I need to go out and see how the nutrition side of things are. They're doing the, the mental side of things, and anything that I can take from them that'll help me. Obviously, I want to grasp and, and take a hold of that to elevate myself. But whatever I can give to them, if it's just the technical side of things or whatever it might be, yep. I'm more than willing to give it to them because. You know, like I said, at the end of the day, when everything's said and done, you know, we're all on the same team. We're all chasing the same goal. We all are Team USA, you know. Uh, and I think the older I got uh, and just realizing wrestling and, and becoming more mature about it, I think it's just that much easier, you know. And I got I got to train with some of the best guys, you know, even – the year I went 70 and James beat me out for the spot at 70 kilos. Uh, right after the match, I went up to James, congratulated him. And me and James have a great relationship and I let him know. And, and his coach is Brian Snyder, which is another Eastern boy. And I'm like, James, you know, your training camp, when you need to get ready, you call me off fly to Nebraska. I'm there to help you. Right. And the same goes for anybody uh, because you can take little pieces from people and, you can give little pieces of yourself to people and, and we all build together and, and evolve. Yeah, and it's it's so interesting too because, you know, the, there's so much... I love the sport of wrestling for so many reasons, but, you know, I really got back into following it probably like six or seven years ago. When I started my agency in 2008, Cal Sanderson was my first client. Um, then, you know, Jake Varner and Jordan Burroughs were clients soon after. Like, I got... I wrestled was very crappy in high school, did nothing, but I, I just, I love the sport and I, I thankfully got so entrenched and in getting involved in scrap life and all these things that now I'm so entrenched and I'm in the camps. Like I'm in so many corners that I see it and it's, right. it's amazing to me just how much good character is out there. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to, to start this podcast. And one of the reasons why I wanted to have these, these high level wrestlers on here that even if you're not a wrestling fan, there's so much to take away from something like that 
when it comes to how you should be as a competitor. And wrestling's unique because, and I'm curious this too, like you, you have an alliance almost to the U.S. more than anything. You grow up in Easton, PA. You go to college at Oklahoma State. You you go to train right. at Cornell. You go to train at North Carolina. Like you move around. It's it's kind of like an army family, and you quickly grow an allegiance to your country and, and Team USA. And that's such a good mindset to have. When you were younger, take me back to. And this is funny because I'm curious about what Quentin was curious too. What made okay. you want to leave Easton to go to Oklahoma State? And I believe, I don't know, you tell me if I'm wrong. If if you're a PA boy and Cal recruits you now, does that change, do you think, your trajectory going back to pre-college? Right, and that's 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 a hard question to address, right? Because when I'm getting recruited from Easton, Kale Sanderson's in the mix when he's at Iowa State. Yep. Right? My top three schools were... Oklahoma State, second one was Ohio State, third one was Iowa State. Interesting. Um, and uh, there was Kale's like first year or second year out, and he was new to the the business. But the funny thing is, is my favorite college and where I wanted to go was Penn State. But I didn't really see the success. I didn't see yep. success in the coaches. And this is not to knock any of the coaches. You know, I think Derlin was awesome. I think Sutherland was awesome and Hughes and all those guys. It was a great staff. Yep. But I think for, and and with that said, I wanted to go to Penn State, but I didn't think as the wrestler I wanted to be. So first thing I said getting into wrestling was I wanted to be an Olympic champion. Uh, now with that said, and looking at Penn State with the success level, uh, I looked at coaches. Right, and when I looked at coaches, I looked at Kale Sanderson. Uh, an exception was uh, like, w- what did these guys do on an international level? And yep. then obviously you have John Smith. Right. right, and what what broke what broke me to go to Oklahoma State was I really really enjoyed John's uh, style. I yep. think it fit very very well with mine. Um, so that question is so hard, but I believe I honestly, I could have went to Penn state, but I think I would have like, I think I would have still picked Oklahoma state just because of the style. Right. And then you had Coleman Scott, who was, I was a big time fan of, you know, yep. uh, long story short is when Coleman won his senior title, uh, in Pennsylvania, I was that kid that was standing in the, the tunnel waiting to get Coleman shoes. That's you know, awesome. So I got Coleman shoes. I had him sign them, and then, uh, and, and the funny part was, even though, even though I went to Oklahoma State, when before I was getting recruited by them, since they were winning all the time, I didn't like Oklahoma State. And on top <laughs> of it, they were working up in colors, you know. And I'm from Easton, so like, I can't go and wrestle for a team that's orange. And then after seeing them keep winning, I'm like, right. every time I see orange, I'm like. They got to lose. I hope they lose. Right. <laughs> Unless it was Coleman. And when I see Coleman wrestle, I'm like, oh, I'm rooting for Coleman. I'm rooting for Coleman. Uh, so Coleman ended up going there. And then just watching how the coaches, you know, develop and, and, and what they did in their careers. Uh, I believe John Smith was a perfect fit for me. Uh, and Kale, that, that would have been a hard question to address, right? Uh, if he was at Penn State, would I have went? Possibly. Hey, but, it's interesting uh, too because it, it it's so hard to look back and and say you would have done something differently. I feel like it's even harder to do that when you won NCAA's twice, <laughs> and and you right, were, and, and, and you were just there a third time. It's not like you went to Oklahoma State, you didn't get the job done, and now you're like, okay, maybe I would have went to Penn State, this and that, like. And I and I think Oklahoma State was the perfect fit for me with John Style. It, John, as a coach, when I talked to John and he came to sit in my my living room and recruit me, I knew that was my coach as soon as we started talking. Just because, you know, growing up from Easton and, and being where I'm from, uh, you know, I needed more, I needed a lot of structure outside of the room, too. Yeah. And, and I knew myself, and uh, 
I didn't know if Kim would be able to handle me, honestly, like outside of the room. Uh, Interesting. And, and, you know, one one thing is, is John came in and, you know, he almost laid the law down in my house in front of my mom. And I'm like, oh, man, this guy terrifies me. <laughs> and that's what you need. You need that. Yes. Yes. And that's what I needed. And, and it not only terrified me, but it was somebody I a hundred percent trusted in. And, and right. I would, get, I would, I would risk my life for it. Right. right. And I knew I was in good hands with John Smith and I wasn't wrong. You know, even to this day, I talked to John and if you see my past tournaments, John is, you know, if he's not in my corner, he's five to 10 yards away from my corner where I can see him. Yep. Uh, so me and John have formed a, a amazing relationship and it's just more than student athlete, you know, and it was more like father, son. Yep. And for me, that was, that was very powerful. Uh, and he was just an inspiring coach and, and who, and I'm not, I'm not ever saying anything that not Kale cause I think Kale is absolutely amazing. Uh, but I think for the person I was, I think John Smith was perfect for me. And uh, I think I made the right decision. Even if Kill would have been the Penn State, I think I still would have went. I, I know I still would have went with Coach Smith. And, and I just knew one of the things that, you know, landed with me, you know, and it was just my competitive mentality. John Smith came in my house. And one of the things he said, he goes, listen, he goes, you can come to Oklahoma State. We'll win national titles. We'll go on and win world titles, Olympic titles. That's what you want to do. I'll help you get there. He goes, but if you don't want to come to Oklahoma State, I will go recruit the number two guy, Tyler Graff. I have him right here on my phone, and I'll train him to beat your ass. <laughs> and with that, with that mindset, I was like, this is my guy. I don't, yeah. You're my coach. You are my coach, right? So um, right from there, I was like, I, I love this guy. I respect him. And, I knew right there I was in good hands. So even like right after high school, I, I didn't even walk in my grad. I think, I don't even know if I walked in my graduation. I don't think I did. I just flew straight to Oklahoma State, started my summer courses, and got right after I'm it. surprised you with know? that big of a bond you left the Oklahoma RTC afterwards. Yeah, I think uh, I think it was more stubbornness than yeah. anything. Uh, but I, I, also, I also knew that... Uh, you know, like I said, like the relationship between me and John, it was kind of, it was a, it was a stubbornness move, but it was also a good move for me yep. because it helped me develop, uh, also as a person outside. Uh, and, you know, I got to go to Arizona state where I got to do the coaching side of things. And I got to work with Zeke Jones, who was another amazing coach that I love to watch and, you know, fit right in my arsenal, which he was a lefty. He shot singles, which is not my number one shot. And Zeke, coming from the world team and USA Olympic teams, getting to work with him, he didn't just have the the wrestling mentality. He had the science mentality and everything that goes behind the wrestling, the recovery, the nutrition. And he also had the wrestling. Don't get me wrong. He's a right. guru. But I think they were – Zeke Jones and John Smith are two sides of the spectrum of coaching. Right, you you go to Zeke and Zeke breaks down your recovery, your nutrition, what you need to be doing with hydration, uh, and kind of beating things scientifically. Where you can go to John Smith and John Smith can train your mind to be an Olympic champ, and your body's not even there yet, and he has you believing that you you're the best. And I believe John. When she can tap into you mentally, and he, he trains you mentally, you know, he, he take you past barriers you never thought you could break down. And uh, that was very, very powerful, you know. Uh, that's why he develops a lot of wrestlers and, and those guys that really buy in, and, and John taps into the, the, the mental aspect. Um, he can make you jump over the moon, right? So I think those are two different wrestlers. And, and, and when I left, you know, still when I get ready for big tournaments and, and big matches, whether it's Shimizu, Asgard, you know, so and I'm still heading back to Okie State and training with John and getting his eye and his view of things and and uh, 
it's almost like I go back there for John to tell me how bad I'm doing and everything. Right. So and I, it, I, need, I need to be broken down a little bit instead of patted it on the butt, patted it on the back and say, good job, Jordan, you're doing well. And it's funny, too, because I look at it, again, almost from a fan standpoint, is I look at it when it, when it gets to guys like you, Yanni, Zane. If you look back to this last week, for example, I, I told my friends, like, they're like, you know, are you going? Are you, are you going? What do you think? I'm like, listen, I'm staying out of it. I love Yanni. I love Zane. And right. I, I don't want to get that close. And I and they said, well, who do you think is going to win? And I'm like, it, it's so hard to even predict. But I said, I think it's going to come down to the coaches. Who wants it more right. from a coaching standpoint? Because you got world class coaches on both sides. You got Rob and, and Mike Gray on one side, and you have yep. Cal and Casey on the other, and you have two of the absolute best wrestlers in the country going at it, and they've both beat each other already. It's that close. And and I'm assuming that's your mindset going into the Olympics. Like you have arguably the most stacked weight class. And not not arguably, it is. It has to be the most stacked weight class at the trials next year. And right. how much of it do you think is is coaching? And how much of it do you think like I don't know, I'm not I'm not an athlete, so I don't know, but I feel like there's only so much you can do as an athlete. You can only get your nutrition so on point. You can always evolve, but I'm right. assuming so much of that is coaching. Right. And and I think coaching is huge, right? And, and and for different athletes, it's different. And and that's the crazy thing about our sport. You can go to a, a Kyle Dake, and it's almost like let Kyle do his thing, you know, and, and you know, chime in when, when Kyle needs cues or, hey, you're hanging here too much, you're doing this, you're doing that, and Kyle goes and fixes it. Uh, but me as an athlete, I know I like more structure, and I like – that coach to see I'm dead tired and also put me through the ringer again to make sure, you know, I'm at that point where I'm like, I, some days I'm just like, I don't want to wrestle. Anymore. Especially you a know? couple, right. A couple of weeks ago, um, Burroughs and I were having a conversation about that in regards to when you're a wrestler, you, you talk, let's say elementary level, middle school, high school, collegiate, you, you depend on your coaches for everything but there's so much less structure as you go on. Like in middle school right. and high school, wrestling back then, you don't know what you're doing. You just get dressed. You know you're going to get your butt whooped, and you go out there and give yep. it everything you have. You can't think of anything else. Now, at, at the international level and the senior level, you almost have to figure out for you what you need, even, that, even if that's yep. engaging coaches. And I can't imagine how much harder that is like going into a year like this, we were like, okay, I've got to be Ashnault, Zane, Yanni, all these guys in eight months. What do I need from the coaches? That's not a thought that 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 in many sports it's always a team sport. So you always have highly conditioned practices with with coaching, um, or not highly conditioned, but highly structural structured practices with coaching. Correct. Yep. So how do you make that adjustment to, to continue to assess and figure that out? Like, does that come natural? Um, well, for me, it's been, uh, it's, it's been a different ride for me, right? It's, it's, I've been with the coach in who has one of the best structures and knows how to handle his athletes. Cause he's been doing it with the USA team, which was Zeke and, and, you know, even before that, John was very structured and very detailed on what he wanted to do and see the same way. And then, you know, uh, I I got that suspension and then I go and I'm training with at Cornell where there's structure, but also it's more freely, like do what you need. If you need a, a recovery day or we're going to come in and play and me and Kyle and Yanni kind of uh, figuring things out. But for myself, I had Corey Cooperman there as well, but it was almost free, you know, free mind and figuring things out with Kyle and, and, and us um, almost holding each other accountable and, and figuring things out ourselves. And yes, we have the coaches and Ahad's there and Rob's there and Mike's there. If we needed anything or, or if they saw we were lacking in anything, they'd jump right on us and, 
make sure we were structured and uh, got what we needed. So I've been on both sides of the spectrum. So for me, it's kind of like, where have I been most successful? And what does Jordan Oliver need? And, and, you know, before I even came to North Carolina, you know, one of the, the other place I was looking was Nebraska. You know, obviously Oklahoma State was was in the mix, but uh, Nebraska was the other place, and it was kind of, you know, okay, I can go with Jordan, but am I going to have the coaches that have the detail I that know me as a wrestler and as a person right. to be able to tell me, hey, we're, 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 we're shying off the path a little bit. We need to get back on it. This is what we need to do. So for, for me, myself, it was I needed the coaches. I needed somebody after I'm dead tired and I'm sitting there to be like, okay, you got three more sprints. You have 25 more executions. Right? I need to break your law. I need to break you down. Uh, and sometimes it's hard to do that for yourself. Right? It's hard to access what you need, uh, especially when fatigue comes into play. Right. And for me, it's, I need somebody that knows me and, and is going to break me down, but also build me up and just has a detailed eye and knows of, of the wrestler I am. So for me, it was the coaching side. Like I need somebody on the outside. Uh, and I, I'm a very technical, savvy person. I love technique. I love figuring out things. So that was never a problem for me. You can throw me with a second grader. And I'll sit there and watch him wrestle and I'll pick out things that he scored with that I could use. Right. Right. Uh, so me as a wrestler, I was like, okay, it's not so much the technique and, and coming from Cornell, you know, when I was looking to leave, it's like, and it's not the partners. I, I scrap with Yanni every day. I scrap with Kyle Dick every day. These guys are winning, right. And, and winning at the highest level. So for me, it was kind of, you know, trial and error. Uh, and it might, it's taken me more years to, to make a team or be at the level I want to be. Uh, but I'm fine with that because now I feel I'm in a position. I put myself in a position to, okay, I have the coach that's going to hold me very accountable. That's been there. That's done it. I have a training partner that I've trained with since Oklahoma state. And then, you know, I even have other aspects coming in with Tony Ramos and, Bryce Hoffman and uh, I think it's just a good mixture so for me as a person I think you have to sit and really take a step back and look from the outside of when you've been successful and, and what was the key factors in being successful and I really think you need to have a, a f like fully trust your corner you know and your coaches and whatever they say and you do and you fully believe in that that makes you bulletproof, right? And and for me, it was, it wasn't even at Cornell. Like I fully trusted those guys, and I still do. But I think, for me, you know, having Kenny and knowing he won the Olympic gold medal, uh, having trained with him before, I know that whatever he tells me to do is only for my best interest, and will put me at a level where I want to be to, to win the Olympic gold, but not just win the Olympic gold, but to win it in fashion and dominate. Right. So, um, I think you got to know yourself as a wrestler and then you go and make that decision. But, you know, for me, it was harder because I was bouncing around. Like you said, I went to Arizona state and I went to Cornell and now I'm at North Carolina. And I imagine you know, too, like the other thing too that that's so interesting is, and, and you just mentioned it when when you got suspended a year and a half ago now or two years ago, whenever it was, yep. um, because that was another incident where you have to kind of trust your mindset to get through that, and you have to be like, that's a bummer. Like I remember how bummed you were after that happened, and it's like, okay, I'm out a year now. Even more yep. so, you got to trust your coaches. You got to trust the people around you. Talk me through your right. mindset, and when a situation like that happens, where it's like, "Okay, this sucks. What do I do?" Oh man, that was that was a rough time, as as everybody can see. You know, uh, you know, I finally broke through. I won the U.S. Open for the first time, getting things rolling. I go and wrestle Chimizo, 
who's considerably at the time the best pound for pound wrestler in the world. Uh, I wrestle him in a close match, and then the news comes, it hits. So it's like it was almost a blessing in disguise for me. It, it, it made me step back from the sport, right, and and see things from a different angle. And at first, it was rough. It was like I'm the guy. I should be the guy. I beat these guys, but I shouldn't be the guy because I didn't have all of my ducks in a row, right? I had my wrestling great, but I didn't have my outside life great. And I didn't take the precautions and necessary steps to have a TV and do all those things to make the team, right? So on a sense, I want to be like this and that, but everything goes back and and I take it upon myself. I made my bed. I got to lay in it. So for me, um, like I said, it was a blessing in disguise because I've been wrestling with a jacked up shoulder. So honestly, the day we got the news, you know, Zeke took me to the doctor's office. We went and got my shoulder fixed, which was a must, you know, to, to especially for the long term goals. Yeah. Yes. Yes. To compete and win at the highest level. I have to have my body healthy and I have to be taken care of myself. Um, so I got surgery and then at that time it was kind of, Okay, so it came into question like, hey, do you do you really want to keep doing this, right? You, and I got one year, but then it turned into two year suspension because they took out the last chance qualifier. Right, with the timing. So, right. Yes, and 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 for me, it was uh, you know, I had to sit back and really not be selfish, right? Because. It was like I could sit here and be like, "Oh, it's it's their fault. They didn't have the last chance qualifier. They did this. They did that." And you know, I had to sit back and take a look from the outside and be like, "Listen, they didn't do anything, right? I I, I put myself in this position, and now I got to accept it. But I also got to make the best of it, right? So even you know, when I got suspended, there was a point in that year that I couldn't. I couldn't even associate or go to USA wrestling functions. I couldn't go to the camps. Um, Because they wouldn't let you or you didn't want to. uh, I just wasn't allowed to. It was, it was just in the, like in the, you know, in the suspension, that's what happened. I couldn't come to camps, and I couldn't do any of that. I had to stay away from like USA wrestling functions for a year. Wow. And, but like I said, it was a blessing in disguise because even before that, some of the guys would tell you it was like pulling teeth to try to get me to camp sometimes, you know, because I'm like, I, there's a reason I train in specific locations, right? And and for me to go to camp is you're taking me out of the location that I chose to, to train in and I believe in and I trust in these guys that where I'm at, they're going to get me to that level. I don't need to go to camp. I don't need to go to camp. And that was my mindset for a little bit. And then, the suspension came along and then when I couldn't go to camp, I was sitting at home like itching and I'm just watching the guys training and everybody getting like better and and going and and competing and having fun. And I'm just sitting back like, I want to go to camp. I want to go to camp. And all of a sudden my mindset changed where it's like, all right, well, I got to sit out this year can't go to camp i want to go to camp i want to do everything i can to help because you know now it's not about me now i have two years and i can make the best of it or i could be a baby about it and and be sour about it and sit around and not help anyone but also not help myself that would have done nothing for me to sit around and pout and and be sour about it so what i did is you know I, i i found a location uh which was cornell which you know, it was unbelievable. You know, Rob took me in and, and I started training with Kyle and I started training with Yanni, helping Yanni. Uh, you know, it was two months before his first NCAAs. And, you know, I got in. We just, as soon as I got in, it, I just got released from my shoulder surgery. So I got to help Yanni, help Yanni. And we were training, figuring out things. And I'm training with Kyle Dake and I'm figuring out the outside life of things and, and nutrition and, uh, other aspects of wrestling and it was like man this was this was actually good that this happened so then the first time I'm able to go to camp or I'm able to help any of these guys you know I'm camp right away 
Matt Camp. I'm helping these guys. And, and uh, I started growing not just as a competitor. I started growing as a person. You know, I started picking up little things here, little things here, going to camp, hanging out, uh, and figuring out just the lifestyle of a true champion. And, and, uh, sometimes uh, you got to go to a dark place to find light. Yeah, for sure. And it seems like, too, uh, unless something like that brings you to a situation like that where it's very hard, for example, for me, I I couldn't just go entrench myself in the marketing world from a different perspective by choice. I just can't. But if you took away my computer or my phone for six months and you forced me to be involved because I loved it, I'm, I'm guaranteed to look at things from a different perspective. But it's it's hard exactly. to do that. That that's a that, that's, yeah. you, you know it's there's been many times in my life where God makes beauty from ashes because there's something that is darkness, and you have to go through it. It it, it, it it's so cliche, but it's the truth. It is. It is, and, and that's exactly what happened. It was like without all the 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 glitz and the glamour, it was like I got wrestling taken away from me. I couldn't compete. I couldn't go associate with. You know, wrestling is my family. Wrestling is my friends. And, and there was a time where, you know, I, I I resented it when it first happened. I resented everything. I was like, oh. And I was like, why do I resent it? And, it's, and I had to keep going back. And I was like, it's, it's no one's fault. It's my fault. And I got something that I love to do, something that I have a passion in, that I go in and do. I would do every day. It doesn't matter about the sponsorships. It doesn't matter about getting paid it doesn't matter about anything when i'm in the wrestling room my my mind i'm not thinking about anything else i'm smiling i'm having a good time even though i might be dying and tired i still am i have freedom when i'm in the wrestling room it's like my sanctuary you know it's it's interesting happened they took it from me It, it was like oh my god like yeah, this is what I love to do, and this makes me happy no matter what. And then it's funny because one one of the things I want, one of the final things actually that I wanted to bring up was when you, where you are in your life right now, you're betting on yourself and you're going all in. You're training yeah. to be an Olympic champion and nothing else. It's you're you're all in, and yep. when you go all in. You can't necessarily have backup plans. You, you, otherwise, you're right. not going all in. You're just kind of testing yep. the waters with something and seeing how it goes. But when you yep. go all in this much, how much of it is the love of wrestling that's like, listen, I'm training for the Olympics in Tokyo, and that's it. Whether I make the team and I'm an Olympic champion or I don't or this happens or, or that happens – the answer lies obviously in what you already did where you got suspended, couldn't compete for two years, and you didn't leave the sport one bit. You didn't try to go start a company, you didn't try to go do this or that. Like you just right. you found a different way to stay involved within the sport. Is that the same right. thought process for, for you know, thinking long term for your career, thinking over a one year, five year, ten year, twenty year period? Uh I think right now where I'm at it's almost like Pat Downey saying, you know, it's, it's Olympic camp or homeless. Yeah. Right. Uh, but I know myself, I know, uh, after the Olympics are done, who knows? I can go to 2024 if I wanted to, I can go into coaching, but some way, somehow I'm always going to be involved in wrestling because it's just simply what I love to do. It's the first thing I fell in love with and I never stopped loving it. You know, there's been times of, of deviation of mindset of this is getting too hard, but why is it getting too hard? You, some things make it harder than what it seems, you know, this, the outside stresses and, uh, of, and, and, you know, little things like the suspension. And I say that's a little thing because it, it, it was something so little and it, it drew me closer to my sport. It drew me closer to my love. So for me, uh, I don't want to give myself a backup plan because yep. then I'm I'm kind of like, okay, if this don't happen, I'm still good because I'm going to do this, right? It's I know if I'm an Olympic champ, it doesn't matter about what comes with being an Olympic champ. It's it's 
the goal I set as a little kid, the first goal I ever had, and, and it was about the dream. And, and right now, uh, I'm treating it as if this is my last opportunity to ever make a team, my last opportunity to ever take the mat as a competitor. Right? So I have to address it as it's all in or nothing. Uh, with that being said, of course, things could change in the blink of an eye. Right. And that's, that's our sport. You know, I can call on tomorrow. Let me knock on wood right now. And I can blow out my whole knee and never be able to wrestle again. Right. But I don't think that would ever change my, the person I am or, or me not wanting to wrestle or be involved in the sport of wrestling. But I think when you're trying to achieve something at this level and, and, uh, I think you have to have the mentality of it's all or nothing. Because I can't do this half ass. I can't skip a run. I can't skip a lift because, you know, I got to, it's investing in yourself. And the, and the more I invest in myself, the more bulletproof my mind and body become. And then having, you know, the security and trust in my coaches, uh, I think that comes full effect, you know. And right now it's, you know, I'm training to be a Olympic champ today. And tomorrow when I wake up, Everything and every decision I make is to be the 2020 Olympic champ. And the following day, and I tell people this, they're like, so what are you doing? And it's, and it's like, I got to win 364 intangible golds before right. I can go and get that tangible gold put around my neck. Right? So it can't be, oh, uh, today I'm a, I'm a little tired. And I'm supposed to do this, but I got to take off. No. Every day, in some way, shape, or form, if I'm not able to train, I got to be training my mentality. I got to be training my habits. I got to be training everything around me that, okay, this is a step towards the goal, right? The way I'm eating, this is the step towards the goal. This is the way to the goal. I got to win it here. And these little decisions I make day in and day out got to be about winning the Olympic gold. If they're not about winning the Olympic gold, I'm not all in and I'm not putting myself in position to do so. And and it's very evident from just even following you on social media, like not watching you in, in a wrestling river day, but just seeing your, your passion. I mean, just before we started this conversation, I saw the message you put out, like, listen, you can't bank on a bad weight cut or conditioning this year. Like be ready. Like you, you can tell where yeah. your mindset's at. And it's it's obviously so crucial to have that mindset of being all in. Um, yep. So what's next now? I mean, this year is interesting because Olympic trials are April. So rather than waiting till the open and all that, and or sorry, the opens in December this year. Olympic trials is in yep. April. Um, you're you're healthy. You're good. So so, what's next? Bill Farrell open or or internationally or have you not figured that so out for, yet? So we have a, a set schedule already, uh, and uh, next for me is I'm going to go to Dagestan and train uh, in October, and then I'm going to compete in a tournament over there. Uh, but I got to do things I've never done, and I got to I got to get outside my comfort zone and. and I got to go and chase down some of the good training and best training. So uh, I'm setting up to go to Dagestan and train uh, for a week to 10 days and then get to compete in a tournament over there where I'm making weight. Uh, and then as soon as I come home, it's, you know, back to training. Next thing's the Bill Farrell. Uh, and planning on hitting the Schultz and then the U.S. Open. And then obviously between the U.S. Open and the trials we want to try to, you know, you'll have about eight weeks. Right. And I'll take, I'll take that time to, to crispen up my technique and, and just go over things that we're seeing through these, you know, competitions and, and where I can get better, whether it's, you know, uh, my recovery plan, my, my, my training, uh, my positions I'm getting in against people, I'm not finishing, why am I not finishing? How am I executing? So uh, I'm trying to learn learn as much as I can about myself uh, as a competitor, and also put myself in the most uncomfortable positions. You know, one thing uh, I always took from Coach Smith, right? And in this world, 
it's always, you know, there's a saying that people always say it's, it's, it's control what you can control. Right. But in the wrestling world, I don't believe it's that right. And one thing that coach Smith that said to me that always stuck with me was expect the unexpected. Yeah. Be, be I like that. For the unexpected. Right. It's not control what you can control. Cause sometimes in this sport, there's just things you simply cannot control. It, you don't know why and you don't know how they happened or why they happened. It's, it's not that just, be prepared to be in the worst possible scenario. And if you're prepared for it mentally, it doesn't matter physically. Sometimes it does, obviously. Right. If you, if you break a leg or something, knock on wood again. But it's expect the unexpected. So when the unexpected happens and, and the uncomfort sets in, it's I'm ready for this. I, I've trained here. I've been here mentally. I've been here a million times. So when it happens, it's, this ain't new to me. I can, I can, I can adjust, and I'll figure out a way to win. Period. I like that. Listen, that's a great note to end on. So, thank you so much for taking the time to come on today and, and chat with me. It's always a pleasure to be able to get into the mindset of someone who's had such a level of success and is still so hungry for for more success and on a different level. Yes, sir. I, I appreciate you giving me the the time and, and it's an honor to get on this podcast and, and to speak wrestling and, and kind of let people you know know my mentality and, and you know my vision on how i approach things and you know at the end of the day we're all we're all on the same team you know a lot of people in the wrestling world get at each other but push come to shove when the usa singlet is on that person you better believe out there will punch for him too. <laughs> Amen, man. All right, sweet. Well, enjoy the Tar Heels game. Enjoy the next workout, and we'll chat soon. All right, sounds good. I appreciate the time, man. All right, talk you to you later, bro, man. You too. And that's the episode. Thanks so much for tuning in today. And as always, let me know your feedback. What do you want more of, less of? And speaking of feedback, if you enjoy this podcast, it would mean the world to me if you would leave a review and subscribe on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. We'll be back next week with another great episode.